In this video, we're going to discuss the concept of hemorrhage. What is a hemorrhage? Is blood outside of vessels, of actually blood vessels. So you can think of a hemorrhage as blood where it's not supposed to be. So if you have, you know, a blood vessel, the blood is confined usually to this, um, used to this blood vessel. And in the case of inflammation, some of components of the blood leak out. But in the case of hemorrhage, everything leaks out. And it goes into the extracellular matrix, the interstitial matrix. They also call it et extravascular or outside the vascular system. So hemorrhage is just blood outside of the blood vessel into the tissues where it's not supposed to be. There is a group of disorders called the hemorrhagic or bleeding diathesis. And these hemorrhagic diatheses or those bleeding diatheses are, are problems or, or uh, a high tendency um, for this to happen to, for hemorrhages. So it's a higher tendency for um, bleeding to happen. And some of the causes of this hemorrhagic or bleeding diathesis are uh, vitamin K problems, which are... Um, clotting factor problems if you're on warfarin or blood thinner drugs you know your your blood's really thin so you can bleed really easy and there's a whole slew of conditions or medications or problems that will promote bleeding or hemorrhaging so we'll we'll discuss those later but i just want to kind of address the the big overall picture of hemorrhage and what hemorrhaging is so there's three types of or three kind of classifications of hemorrhaging that are common within the literatures. There's petechiae, pura pura, and ichymosis. Speckles of, of hemorrhaging that you can see through the tissues. They're really small. Um, medium size, the pura pura is three to five millimeters, you know, so they're a little bit bigger. Echymosises are one to two centimeters and they're they're big bruises. So when you see a bruise on yourself and you get you get hit on the arm and then you start seeing that big spot, and that's also called an ecchymosis, and that's due and that's just saying that there's a large a larger size of hemorrhage hemorrhaging going on in those blood vessels below the skin that you are seeing. So to understand this concept a little more, I'm going to show you this picture. This is a picture of someone that had vasculitis which is inflammation of the blood vessel, which causes, you know, you can imagine that if you have inflammation in one of your blood vessels, it will cause problems within the integrity of the blood vessel, which will then cause, you know, these little bumps. So you can see these little bumps here. These are, these would be petechia, these little small ones here, petechia, and then these larger ones right here would be pura pura and then if you know you, you've seen a bruise before where it would cover a big place that would be an ecchymosis but in this case you can just see the petechia these little small bumps everywhere and then the larger bumps would be considered pura pura so that is hemorrhaging and petechia pura pura and ecchymosis so now let's talk about ecchymosis a little bit more. Ecchymosis. So when someone gets an ecchymosis or a bruise, a big, you know, one to two centimeter uh, bruise appears, and that is due to the hemoglobin inside your red blood cells. So you have a red blood cell, a red blood cell, and you have hemoglobin inside. You have a lot of hemoglobin inside one red blood cell. So it's estimated that there's 280 So it's estimated that there's 280 million hemoglobin per one one red blood cell. That's a lot of hemoglobin. So and imagine 
how many red blood cells are in a drop of blood. So once this uh, red blood cell with these 280 million hemoglobin molecules um, spill out or hemorrhage out into the extracellular matrix outside of your blood vessels, in, in the case of an ecchymosis, the, the hemoglobin is phagocytized by the phagocytes and macrophages, the other cells that eat this, will try, they will try to clean up the mess, the spill, you'll get the red-blue color. And then as the hemoglobin is recycled to, or, you know, converted to bilirubin to, to try to be recycled and conserved is you get a blue-green color. And then the bilirubin is converted to hemosiderin, which then you'll get the golden-brown color. And these are kind of the stages of healing, if you will, of that bruise. And this is why you see those colors when you get a bruise. So in the case of peptic ulcers and menstrual bleedings, you can, you're losing a lot of these red blood cells and you're losing a lot of hemoglobin. And inside this hemoglobin, you have iron. So when people have peptic ulcers from chronic uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory use or other, other causes of these peptic ulcers or when people have abnormally long menstrual bleedings you can have uh, you can lose a lot of iron because there's iron inside each one of these hemoglobins and because there's 280 million um, about 280 million red blood cell or hemoglobin molecules inside one red blood cell um, you can lose a lot of iron and then you can get iron deficiency anemia so once you have iron deficiency anemia, that can cause the oxygen carrying capacity of your red blood cells to be decreased. So hemorrhaging is an important concept, and it's, we'll talk about more, more examples of that as we go along.